Okay. So if you have any technical issue, please stop me uh, or whatever uh, question, stop me. So just a bit of information. Um, eh, ¿Hay algún problema si tomamos el almuerzo eh, durante la clase? Sí, ustedes pueden tomar el almuerzo. <ríe> no me molesta. Sí, buen provecho. <ríe> Disculpe, es que tengo clases seguidas todo el día. Sí, sí, sí. No, no hay problema, Gabriel. No hay problema. No. Uh, en serio, no, no hay problema. Uh, ustedes pueden uh, tomar almuerzos. Uh, nuestra clase es a, uh, a las dos uh, es el tiempo de almorzar. Um, sí. Nosotros vamos a encontrarnos uh, martes y jueves, dos a uh, tres y quince. Mi correo, mi teléfono, uh, WhatsApp también. Ustedes me pueden contactar uh, en mi teléfono o llamarme si es una cosa urgente, um, para si ustedes uh, quieren hablar conmigo, podemos hacer una cita, podemos encontrarnos aquí en Webex, es muy fácil, solo contact me and that's fine. Ok, yo voy a uh, cambiar uh, el idioma y hablar inglés. Um, now, we start our first lecture with something that is called the rationale of the course, the reason for this course. Then very, very uh, brief. Then the textbooks. Then I'll have a few topics to introduce to you today, uh, some terminology. And then I'll, I'll give you some uh, sections in the textbooks to read. And finally, we'll look a bit at the program. Yeah, uh, you can uh, download the program um, as well. So here is something that says, who needs structural uh, geology? Sorry. Uh, and this is taken from, uh, from um, a, digital, uh, a digital book, which I'm gonna give you the link. And um, I, I, I don't think it's, a complete explanation here, but it's pretty good. So the idea is that, as you can say, what this text text says, as you can see, if you are going to explore for oil, yeah, hydrocarbon, oil, gas, or also mineral exploration, what happens? We have structures, we have fractures, we have faults, and what they are. They are pathways, yeah? They are the places where you can have fluids moving along them, moving along them to the place where basically these fluids are going to uh, reside in, in the case of oil or to precipitate uh, metals in the case of, um, of the ore deposits. So what happens for us, for the human society is very important to find the deposits of oil, gas, and of metals. And there is a whole science, and I, I normally, I give an elective course, which is called Topics in Economic Geology and Exploration, because my, um, my experience is in exploration, which uses many, uh, uh, many pieces of information from different disciplines of geoscience to try to find mineral deposits. And it's very difficult to find them. So what happens is structural geologists are very much in need to understand the structure of the crust in any place to see the potential for these deposits. All right, so this is one thing that shows you why we need it. Now, think about also hydrogeologists. Some of you are interested in finding water or finding the aquifers and so on. Now, the water will flow according to the environment, to the structure. So imagine you have igneous rocks, yeah, like plutonic rocks or metamorphic rocks, and 
they have fractures or faults and the water will go along these fractures and faults. So it's very important to understand, you know, to understand what happens structurally in a certain area. And then as you can see here is exactly what we discussed, Gabriel asked me, and this is what, what the civil engineers or geotechnical engineers who go first before they build anything, they have to do what is called here site assessment. Um, for all these things, like I haven't mentioned nuclear reactors. Imagine, imagine a nuclear reactor that sits on a fault and the whole structure fails at some point. It would be a complete disaster, yeah? Um, so it was one, it was one in Fuku the Fukushima power plant in Japan in 2010, uh, 11 years ago. What happens, you know, uh, Japan sits very close to a seismogenic zone, to a zone with, where earthquakes are generated because it, it is a boundary of a tectonic plate. And what happens, a, a very strong earthquake generated a very powerful tsunami, impacted, impacted the power plant and actually there was this failure and radioactive discharge and a total tragedy, yeah? So that's why this is really serious for us, for the uh, human society. And then you all came to study geology because you liked something about our planet. Maybe you like the oceans or you like the mountains, the mountains that we have here in Bogota, yeah? Yeah, very famous, the uh, Andean mountain belt. And you may wonder how did this form? Because if I look here at the rocks, at the rocks uh, in these mountains in Cordillera Oriental here, I can see these sedimentary rocks that were formed in a sedimentary basin. They were formed in an ocean. So how come that something that was on the bottom of the sea now sits here at three kilometers elevation. Yeah, so this has been a big question. And myself, when I was a kid and I used to go to my grandparents finca, yeah, my, my grandparents home in a very nice region in Romania, mountains and so on. And I was fascinated yeah, with the environment and I was looking at the rocks looking at the mountains, I was wondering how come they come to be like this? And uh, this is what stimulated my interest in uh, geology. So the idea is that our understanding of the processes uh, of, um, of the movements that occur in the crust actually comes based on these studies that come under the, the umbrella of structural geology and tectonics. Now, I have to warn you that our class is a class that is very much compact. I had to be very selective and give you, I will give you what I would say the most important things, because this is a very vast field. And in fact, we have two courses in one. It's like two for one, <laughs> like pizza, you know, two for one. So we get structural geology and we get tectonics. I'll explain to you in a bit the difference, but we have actually two different things, yeah? So let's go and, and look a bit at, at um, sure. the textbooks. Um, I don't know Wait, how to do it. Yes? Uh, David. Uh, okay, teacher, I was uh, looking at the things that you said that this course and class and site of geology can come and I saw that you talked about resource uh, exploitation and management. Is there any chance that this course can focus also in the ecologic way to do those type of uh, exploitations or something like that? Because that's something that really I believe that uh, I like to work on and that stuff. Well, uh, yeah, uh, so you are asking if our course now uh, is going, going to discuss about exploration for mineral deposits. 
Is that correct, David? Yes, sir. Yeah. So what happens is that um, this is like a fundamental course. So it's one of the uh, it sits at the foundation of your geoscience education. It's like mineralogy. So you have to study mineralogy. You have to study structural geology and tectonics, petrology, yeah, or the rocks. You all have to study petrology. And uh, this is a foundation. And once you have the foundation, we, ha we, we have these specialized classes. Imagine that you go and study medicine. What happens? First, you have to study anatomy. You, you study anatomy to know the body, yeah? The body very well, all the muscles, everything. Then you have to study something that is called physiology. And physiology looks at the processes, what happens in our body, yeah? And once you, you, you know anatomy and physiology, that is the normal, yeah? Then when you advance and you are an advanced student in medicine, you study pathology. Pathology is the disease, what is going wrong in the human body. So I, the reason I'm telling you this is because in geology, we study the foundation, yeah? The structure of the crust, the processes. So the structure is the, uh, is the anatomy. When we look at the tectonics and see the dynamics, that is a physiology. But then the ore deposits or the oil deposits, they are anomalies. They are not the normal thing, yeah? The ore deposits, uh, you, most of you have studied uh, geochemica, geochemica, geochemistry. Now, the elements, the elements, you learned that the crust has a certain amount, average amount of gold, of copper, of any metal. And something, some conditions very special make them, make them uh, come together in some places in the crust and form an ore deposit, which is uh, an enrichment uh, much larger than the average. And this is an anomaly. It's not the usual thing. So it is equivalent of pathology in medicine. So what we do, we don't have time to address, to address actually ore deposits here because we have to study first, you know, the anatomy and physiology. But whenever I will have the chance, I will make a reference. So I, as I said, for you to, to um, be able to understand where you have a good chance for having ore deposits, for instance, you have to, on the one hand, understand what happens with the faults, how they are connected and so on. And also you have to understand tectonics and why some regions, like you see the Andean Cordillera from Colombia down to Chile, yeah? It has all these deposits of copper, for instance, and gold, yeah? So it has all these deposits along this margin of the continent. And the explanation at a general level, yeah, comes from tectonics, for instance. So when we discuss the tectonics part, of course, I will make reference to this, but we will not have time to go into the details of how the ore deposits form and so on, because that in itself is a different course <laughs> and it takes time. All right. So, so I didn't want to disappoint you, but I hope you, you see that we are building the foundation so that farther down the road, later a bit, you will acquire this knowledge as well. So, so that's what I'm, uh, I, I think is the normal path. Yeah. All yes. Right. Thank you. You are welcome, David. So, um, here are two textbooks. You see them, you had time and I'm giving you here the, uh, uh, links so that you can download them. So I'm going to give you readings. Uh, especially for the uh, structural geology part, I'm going to give you readings from these books. 
selected readings. I will give tell you exactly what to read um, to complement what we discussed in class. Yeah, to to understand better. So you have at your own time you can read that uh, the uh, English language is not very difficult in these books. It's just the terminology, but they have definitions. So you can actually learn a, a term by reading the explanation for the term. So this is going to help you a lot because I think that it is very important that all of you master the English language because geology is an international profession. So you may end up working in any place on this uh, uh, earth and you will need to communicate in English uh, and you need to know the terminology in English. Now, what is good is we are here in South America. South America has great opportunities for work in geology. And of course, in a, 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 a big part of South America, uh, we speak Spanish. So uh, it's also good that you get the terminology from the laboratory course. And from the laboratory course and from this course, you'll know both. And I think this is very good for you. I think that this prepares you very well. Yeah, so that's the idea. But don't be scared. Please don't be scared. Okay, so um, I'm gonna talk a bit about some topics in structural geology for the first class. So one day, I was walking, I think it's called the Circunvalar or something. So there is uh, the Universidad Externado and it has two, two big buildings, which are gray, gray buildings, two big buildings up the slope here uh, in Candelaria, in La Candelaria in Bogota. So I was walking here uh, in front of these buildings and I saw this sign, this uh, traffic post. So I took a picture with you in mind, because I thought just to introduce you to structural geology. So imagine you are a, a policeman yeah, or a policewoman, and you come and look at this. You, you know, the, the car that hit this is no longer there. You don't know who did it. But by looking at this thing, you can draw some conclusions you 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 start to understand what happened yeah obviously you are looking at the formation so you see formation and you can see that there is some deformation that happened here at the base there is some deformation a bend here this is intact you see and there is deformation here so obviously you can reconstruct let's say this is your job as a policeman, you can reconstruct the accident, yeah? Now, imagine this is a simple situation. We as geologists are confronted with something more complicated. We have to look at the rocks and reconstruct the history of the formation. Uh, and the, there can be many, many impacts, many stages of the formation and this is what structural geologists do. But in, in essence, it's the same thing. You have to understand what happened, okay? So that's why I'm, I'm giving you this example. Now, here I'm gonna show you a very important aspect in geology, not only in structural geology, in geology. We look at different scales, yeah? Different sizes of things. And at each scale, we see things and we have to integrate all these scales of observation. So we start here from something microscopic. You see, this is one millimeter, this, okay? And what this shows, this is a fault zone. So there is a fault. So there is a, a break in the rock. Yeah, there is a break along which there was movement, yeah? There was movement. So if you look at the microscope here, what you see, the zone where the, there was movement, you see here the, the crystals here were broken up, were broken up. They are no longer the initial crystals, nice um, as they were initially in the rock. So 
This is called gauge. This is the word for this zone where the rock is broken up. But you become an investigator, like the police guy. You become an investigator and you start seeing things. You know, the movement along the fault was like this, yeah, like this. Uh, this is something that, you know, the author of the photograph tells you, you don't, don't know here, but it was like this. But then you see, this is a quartz grain. So initially this was a quartz grain, but it got broken apart. You see it broken apart. And basically this is what it explains here. It says that this central quartz grain, this one shows extensional fractures. So these are the fractures. You see the fractures here. Very nice. Opened in a kinematically compatible direction. What this means, I'm going to uh, explain this. What this means is that the way these fractures opened is compatible kinematically with the direction of movement. So if this part at the top moved like this and this one at the bottom moved like that, there was tension, there was tension here, and it split the quartz grain, yeah? So this is what this says. And what happened, we don't have here an empty space. You see, it is filled by calcite, which suggests syntectonic fluid flow. What this means is at the time, at the time when there was movement along this fault, and this quartz grain split, there was fluid moving along this, uh, this fault, yeah? And this fluid was uh, having in it, yeah, uh, was dissolved calcium carbonate. And that precipitated at the same time with this process. So syntectonic means syn means at the same time, okay? so. You can see, I'm showing you this. Don't worry, maybe it seems too complicated to you, but I'm showing you this to show you that just in a very little piece of rock from it, we can learn a lot from it. So the idea is that we learn now, we put the foundation to start understanding the processes and what to look for. Yeah, how to interpret things. So that's the idea. Okay, now we started with this uh, with, with this fault zone by looking at a very small piece from it. Now, this is the same fault zone. It is in Colorado, in the United States. Now, if you go to Colorado, you get the Rocky Mountains, very nice, beautiful state. If you have the chance, go there. It's a beautiful, beautiful state. So, and a lot of geology, really. So what happens is this is the outcrop. So you imagine you are the geologist and you come and you look with your eyes. You don't need a microscope. You look with your eyes at the outcrop and you see the fault zone. So this is basically the fault zone. You see it here. So the, here is where the the rock was crushed, yeah, was crushed. And you took a piece from here, yeah, you took a piece and you analyze it at the microscope and then you see more detail, yeah. So this is something that structural geologists analyze in detail, for instance. And then if you move back, yeah, the same, the same zone, yeah, you can see it here. You see there is a road here and there is a hill here. So the person who took the photograph took a photograph of the fault zone. And this is the part from above that we call it the hanging wall. And the from below, we call it foot wall. And if it, the thing it says here, damage zone and damage zone is that you can imagine that this movement of big masses of rock they create some damage in the rock, not only in the fault zone, yeah? The fault zone is where the rock gets really crushed and comminuted, but you get fractures for a certain region 
in the mass of rock above and below. Yeah. So you can see how you can look at the same structure, the same fold at different scales. And at each scale, you see something. Yeah. Each scale of observation brings you some information. And you, as a structural geologist, in the end, integrate this information. So I wanted to show you this yeah using the same uh, the same structure now let's increase the scale of observation yeah let's in increase now here uh, sorry this is another example i i've shown you a fault yeah a fault now here this is an outcrop it is a 2.5 meters outcrop in this photograph and this is a rock called gneiss gneiss now what is very special about this gneiss it is a very old rock you see 3.6 billion years old now think about that the earth is 4.6 billion years old the oldest rocks that we have on earth are 4 billion years and this is 3.6 so this is very old very very old we'll discuss about these very old rocks at the end of the course but the idea is what you see here, it looks to you that the, it seems that the rock flowed as if it were a liquid, as if it were honey. And I will say to you, yes, the rock flowed. It is solid and it flowed in a solid state. All right. So by flowing, it created something that we call folds, for instance, folds. And this is plastic deformation. So this one, this is brittle deformation, fragile. Brittle deformation, it breaks things. Here, the deformation is plastic, yeah? But this happened at depth and at high pressure and at different pressure and temperature conditions than at the surface, the material, the rock material behaves differently. So, the idea is that the structural geologist goes and analyzes this deformation. So structural geologists analyze deformation, basically, to understand the history of deformation. And from the history of deformation, they understand the tectonic history, what happened with the big regions, what happened with the continents, and all these things. All right. Now, this, we increase the scale of observation, yeah? You see, this is like... A mountain. This is in Switzerland, in Swiss, yeah, in the Alps. And at this scale of observation, you can see this fold here and another fold here. And here is something that we call a thrust. That means it's a, a fold along which a huge mass of rock was pushed up. Yeah. So these are terms that we will talk about. We will learn them. But I'm showing you that this class, this, the, the content of this discipline shows you the, some of the most interesting things. Yes, yes, Samuel. Outcrop means afloimento. See, si, afloimento. Um, good question. Thank you. Um, so the idea is that you came to study geology because I'm pretty sure you like mountains, you like oceans, you like our planet. And here we can see and understand what happens on our uh, planet, yeah? So that's the idea. Now, here, this is a satellite image. So we increase the, the, the scale of observation. And this is a piece of a terrain in Western Australia, or in Australia, Western part, the state of Western Australia, there is what's called the Krypton, a very old, very old, uh, region of the crust, where you find those gneisses that float. And here, what you see, these are called granitic batholiths. They are big intrusions of granite. And what you can see in between, there are different rocks, which are old volcanic rocks that were metamorphosed, and they are called metavolcanic 
or greenstone belts because they tend to be green. They contain green minerals like chloride or epidot. And what happens is you can see that there was some deformation that in between these big batholiths, these volcanic rocks got deformed and squeezed yeah, in between them. So very interesting. Now we are in the field of tectonics. We look at, at a big scale of observation yeah, and we try to understand what happened. Oh, so that's, that's another thing. We'll try to go through all these scales of observation. And then finally, we have, as you learned in the course of uh, geology, we have um, the plates, the lithospheric plates, and you learned about the theory of plate tectonics that we will discuss. And the current, yeah, the present day plate configuration. And we'll discuss, this is called the hypsographic curve. And you see, it is a cumulative curve that shows you how much of a percent of the Earth's surface is above a certain elevation. So you see above four kilometer yeah, elevation, you have very little of the surface of the Earth. Above the sea level, you have about 35%, and these are the continents, you see? And then you start with the oceanic domain, which goes down to 11 kilometers below the sea level. And this is called the hypsographic curve, yeah? So 100% of the surface of the earth is above the min minus 11 kilometer <laughs> uh, elevation. All, all the earth surface is above the minus 11 kilometer. Only 30, 35% is above the zero elevation, yeah? So what you see here, what you see is you have a bimodal distribution. Our planet is very interesting. You see it has here a peak somewhere above zero, below one, and then it has here a, another peak in the oceans. This is a bimodal distribution of the Earth's surface, which we see it only on Earth. We don't see it on Venus or on Mars. We see it on Earth. Why is that? We are going to discuss this. So, the tectonics part, I'm pretty sure you all will love it, will like it, because you'll see things. Structural geology, I'm warning you, it's going to be a bit drier, um, kind of more technical in a sense. So, you might find it a bit more, um, a bit less appealing. But, don't lose heart. We start with structural geology and we leave the best thing, the tectonics, for the end, for the second part of the course when everyone is, is tired and so on, we'll discuss really interesting things. All right, so what is a geologic structure? I give you here the definitions from both sources of information, yeah? So, so you see, they refer to a geometric feature, yeah? a geometric configuration of rocks, yeah? So we have to understand the geometry there, yeah, the geometry. Of course, I have here some text that says structural geology only deals with structures creating, created during rock deformation. That means you can have primary structures like layers, layers in a sedimentary basin, the bedding or the layers, that, I, that is a primary structure, or you, you can have the structures formed by the uh, uh, solidification of the magma, yeah? Those are primary structures. Structural geology studies what happened as a result of deformation, deformation of primary structures, for instance, yeah? So that's the idea. Now, tectonics, You've seen how we switched from very little to a large scale of observation, the, the tectonic plates. So when we talk about tectonics, we basically talk about factors that are external to the actual 
a little piece of rock that we look at. If you look at the, at the outcrop and you see a fold, we think about forces that are external, that come from afar, from, from far away and impacted a large mass of rock, yeah? So when we talk about tectonics, we talk about regional processes, continental scale processes, that's what we talk about. And structural geology is the collection of data and we put it together so that we can get a tectonic model, yeah? A tectonic model which explains what happened in a certain area. What happened? What were the forces coming from? What caused these forces, yeah? And what happened as a result of these forces? What explains a certain pattern, yeah, a certain pattern of the structures? And this is a tectonic model. So here is an example. This uh, textbook says, let's say you have a series of normal faults. So the movement is like this, the hanging wall goes down normal faults, uh, which indicate a, a extension in a neurogenic belt. And what happened? So you can have something called the rift, or you can have the collapse of the orogenic belt. And that's what we have to understand as geologists, what happened, all right? So uh, believe me, it is really very interesting. It is a lot of work for us to become good geologists, but it is one of the most rewarding, I would say, professions in the world. Anyway, so let's move on. Um, we talked about the scale, yeah? So here is some terminology. Micro scale, and we talk about the field of micro tectonics, yeah? When you look at thin sections or at electron microscope and it is submicroscopic, we talk about the field of micro tectonics. Now, when you go in the field and you look at Aflorimentos, outcrops, yeah. Um, you see a fold, a fold, you see a fold, yeah, and that is structural geology. When you start, when you start putting together the observations from many outcrops, yeah, and you mapped a certain region, you move from structural geology into the field of tectonics because you start to understand what happened regionally. And when you look at the continent scale, the formation, you are discussing about tectonics, or if there are things that affect the whole planet, that we talk about what happens in the mantle, the flow of the mantle and so on, that is the field of geodynamics, all right? So this is just the terminology, yeah, for you to, to see when we use structural geology, when we use tectonics and so on. But in the end, you see, tectonics is the global view. It, it, it gives us the whole understanding of what happened, whereas structural geology looks kind of uh, at a limited, yeah, at a limited part. Yeah, it can be a, an outcrop, a few outcrops, and so on. All right. So this is something from, uh, we had a professor here, Anna, and she left the university last year in January, uh, and she was teaching uh, Heologia Structural. And I took this because it reiterates in, uh, in Espanol, yeah, the same thing, what I was just showing you in the previous uh, slide. All right, so now you don't have to read this, you'll read it at home, don't worry. When we classify things, yeah, classif these are examples of classification of structures we can use different criteria, yeah? So a criterion can be, uh, can be geometry, yeah? Geometry, and you can say, you look at the structure. Is it a plane? Is it a curvy planar surface? It is a linear feature. What is it? Yeah, you wanna describe it. So you can classify things like this. Or you see classification based on geologic significance. So is it a primary structure, like when the rock was formed, yeah? Uh, this structure was generated. And here you see some examples, local gravity driven. So something flows down a surface, yeah? Flows down a surface. And you have some accumulation of rocks that, that creates a certain structure, yeah? Um, due to uh, gravity 
uh, attraction. Yeah. Uh, some other situations, density inversion, fluid pressure. And then you have what we call tectonic structures, those that are related yeah, to um, forces, to regional forces, to uh, lithospheric plate forces. Those are tectonic uh, structures, and those are most of the structures we will discuss. Okay, so this is a different type of classification. Now, another one that gives you uh, terminology. When the structures were formed, timing, that, that means in time, when? So, sin, as I told you, sin means at the same time as the rock. Uh, for instance, this is something which may seem to you very exotic, pene contemporaneus. But that, that refers in, uh, in the case of sedimentary rocks. You don't have to remember this or to memorize it now, but I like you to see it because that's how you become a good geologist by reading and by, by seeing things. Yeah. Post formational, for instance, means after the rock was formed. So in many cases, the structures are post formational. Yeah. So you have the rocks formed and then you have a fault. It is post formational. And here, what's the process? Was it fracturing? Like when we looked at that, at that fin section, uh, fracturing, frictional sliding. Yeah, so the, the, there is sliding uh, or it's plasticity and the flow. Yeah, so for instance, and here, this is something very important. This number five, uh, this is technology that I want you to understand. Because this is very tricky, very tricky terminology. Tricky means it's it's not very clear unless someone explains to you. So brittle is very simple. Brittle is in Espanol as fragil. You can take a glass and break it, and that is brittle deformation. And the rock the same. Now the problem is the word ductile. So ductile. You see the definition. Ductile means like ductile, yeah? It means formed without loss of cohesion across, and here is a key, a mesoscopic surface. Mesoscopic means at the scale of observation of your eyes. Okay. So when you look, for instance, look at this. You look here, and to you it seems that these layers deformed in a ductile manner there is no loss of cohesion yeah but when you change the scale of observation and go into like closer you see that in fact what it seems to you to be cohesive here there are many faults many faults yeah that basically along these faults there was a loss of cohesion uh, a surface along there was slip and this is here, when you look, you say, well, this is not ductile. This is brittle at this scale of observation. So the word ductile refers to the scale of observation. It, it appears at a certain scale of observation, like you look at an outcrop, and to your eyes, it appears that it is ductile, that it, that it has no loss of cohesion. Then you take a piece, you put it under the microscope and you see many fractures and you say, aha, actually it is brittle. So we have a word, the best word for you to use when the deformation really has no low loss of cohesion, it's plastic. So plastic, as you have seen in that, in that fold of the gneiss, that is plastic deformation, okay? So when we say ductile, it can be brittle or it can be plastic. We don't know. It is just appears to our eyes, to our vision in the outcrop, yeah, in the afflorimento, that it is ductile. So this is very important. That's why I insisted on this term, because when you read literature, every word is very important, technical word, because each technical word conveys to you information okay so that's the idea okay 
And then you see a, a different type of classification. We will discuss about structures that formed as a result of contraction or as a result of extension or as a result of strike slip means like this, yeah? It means there is no contraction, no extension. It is a, what we call a strike slip forward, for instance. All right, so um, a few more words. Um, descriptive analysis, we look at the geometry of structures, yeah? Kinematic analysis, the word kinematic, means movement, movement uh, path. So the, the path, the trajectory of each particle in the rock when it suffered the formation. So you see, you can look at the layers here along a fault, how they got deformed here, and you can infer that the movement was like this. Yeah, so this is kinematic analysis. Look here, yeah, you, you look at the deformation here at the end of, of the layers uh, where they encounter the, the, the plane uh, surface of the fault, and uh, you can infer the movement. Now, strain analysis means the for, uh, analysis of the deformation, and you can talk about the total deformation. So what was the initial shape? What is the final shape of the rock? And that is uh, called finite strain analysis. I mean, initial state, final state. You don't care what happened in between. Or structural geologists look at the history of the deformation, yeah? the formation history. And this is called incremental, like piece by piece strain analysis. They look at the history, how it actually deformed in time. Yeah. So this is for you to, to, to learn the terms. Dynamic analysis, dynamic analysis refers to understanding the forces, yeah, forces or stress. Yeah, that led to the formation of structures. Yeah, so here, for instance, yeah, uh, here in A, you can see that the force is acted vertically. So probably there was a force like this, vertical, like gravity. Whereas here, the forces were horizontal and pushed up this block, which is called the hanging wall. This is a hanging wall. This is a foot wall. Yeah. So in the dynamic analysis. You, if the rocks break, they are brittle, this is a mechanical analysis. And if they flow, if they flow, then it's called a rheologic analysis, yeah? All right, now you can have, you can look at the microscopic scale and that's microstructural analysis or micro tectonics. Or you can look, you can put together the structures, your understanding, from the dynamic analysis, from the strain analysis, from the kinematic analysis, you put all these together and actually you come up with a general view and that's tectonic analysis. You understand really what happened regionally, okay? This is basically the objective in, in the end of the work that structural geologists do. And again, from Anna's course, I started showing you what a police guy might do. So you are basically part of what's called here Ciencia Forense. Okay, so this is what we do. We try to understand what happened. Anyway, so please, uh, it's not much. It, it's just the text that shows. So what I say required reading, these two sections from this book, download it, and this table, which shows this terminology that we discussed to become familiar. In this book, these three sections, they are not big sections, yeah? Just read them. This is required because it's part of what I presented and I want you to know, to know this material. Optional reading, optional means only if you want, yeah? Only if you want, you don't have to. Uh, you can link here. Also, download this, Introduction to Structural Geology of Patrice Ray, and look at slides one to 12, because it's a good understanding of the of science, how we do science, yeah? So uh, please read these things. Now, uh, we have a few minutes left, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna discuss a bit the structure of the course. So as you can see, today we, we had an introduction. 
we are going to discuss about stress, about deformation and strain. Now, strain is changing shape, about rheology. Okay, then we have a test. So we'll have six tests, uh, uh, six examiners partialis, so that it, I make it easy for you that basically we learn something, some concepts and so on, and we have a test so that we don't have a big final exam where you have to learn many other things. I think that, you know, piece by piece, you will basically learn these things. And believe me, the purpose of university and of uh, studying is not to memorize and to remember everything. The purpose is to teach you where to find information. And this uh, virtual situation we are in, basically we'll do the tests like this. I will post yeah, the text with the questions in CQA plus. And I give you, I don't know, depending how much, like two hours or something like this to answer them. And you send me by email, you send me the test. The same like the survey, like the Enquesta. But you use, you can use the slides, you can look in the books, you can call your friend, you can do whatever you want. You can go on the internet. I don't mind. I think that the most important thing for you is to learn where to find the information. I think this is the idea because when you will be a, a professional, no one stops you from using a book, from going on the internet, from talking to other people. The only problem is to know where to look and what to look for, yeah? So in our case, it's more restricted. I mean, you know the material. I am not going to give you difficult questions or to trick you or whatever, no. I will give you questions from the material we discuss. Yeah, so my uh, my desire is that you um, you understand the material. Okay, so don't be afraid of the tests. So then we discuss brittle deformation. Yeah, fragile brittle deformation. So you see, we discuss about fractures and folds. Then the third section we discuss basically. <laughs> again, I use here the word ductile, but obviously. Here we discuss the plastic deformation, basically. So the, there is some brittle deformation. So that's why I have to use ductile deformation, even at the micro scale. But also there is plastic deformation. OK, so this is a part. Uh, this is before the Semana de Recesso. We have this test. And this is the part that is, in my opinion, a bit drier. Yeah, a bit drier. It's like taking a physics course. Now, the second part, I think, in my opinion, is where we put things together. And you can have an overview. You can look at our planet. You can look at the crust. You can understand things. So in my opinion, it's, it's actually opening you uh, to you the new horizons and imagination. So we'll discuss about the interior structure of the Earth. We'll discuss about the theory of plate tectonics and why we call it a theory. Yeah, we'll discuss then about tectonic regimes and basically in the context of the big features of the planet, like mountain ranges. We'll try to, to discuss tectonic regimes, extensional, contractional, and strike slip. And then by knowing this, we'll understand, you see in the final part, the orogens, which are the most complex part of our planet, the most difficult to understand of the origins, a, a huge, huge challenge. And here in Colombia, we have this, yeah? So we need to understand this. And I will finish the course with Precambrian tectonics. So Precambrian is basically uh, the first 4 billion of the Earth's history uh, and the controversy about our understanding of the processes in the Precambrian. So. You, you can see most of the Earth's history was in Precambrian. And the, the message, the rocks from the Precambrian uh, uh, send, send, uh, send to us, uh, the messages they send are very interesting, but extremely complex. So I want to have something different from most of the standard courses and give you uh, an advantage that you know Precambrian tectonics because you might end up working in the Guyana Shield 
from Villa Vicencio to the Atlantic and look for mineral resources. Uh, you can work in the Brazilian uh, territory. You can work in North America, in Africa, in Australia. And we have a big part of the continent are uh, the old regions from the Precambrian. So I want you to know about the Precambrian geology. Okay, so this is it for today. I'm gonna stop this um, sharing. If you have questions, feel free to ask them. If not, feel free to disconnect and relax if you can. <laughs> if you don't have other classes, like some of you, you do. Um, so uh, I think we'll have a very good group here and I look forward to, to being with you for the rest of the term, okay? Thank you very much. Okay, teacher, thank you, bye.